Welcome to this Reason tutorial on CV and gate. What is control voltage and gate? Control voltage or CV is a way to control monophonic synthesizers using voltage to represent note information. Gate is a complement to CV which provides note on and note off information. Both these methods are used in tandem and predate MIDI. Although not used for many physical devices anymore, Reason uses virtual simulations of these protocols as a way to interconnect different rack devices. For this tutorial, we're going to start in the rack window. Press the F6 button on your keyboard to open up the rack window. First, let's create a new channel that we can attach our devices to. Right click a blank space within the racks window, highlight utilities and then click mix channel. Expand the channel's rack view if necessary by clicking the small arrow to the left of the name tag and then click the button to show insert effects. Let's take a look at the back of the channel's rack device by pressing the tab key on your keyboard. If you're familiar with physical audio equipment, you will notice on the back there are several female TRS type connections on the back of the rack device. If you look closely enough, there are two sizes of these connectors, larger ones and smaller ones. The input, dynamics, insert effects and direct out connections are larger than the others. These connections are audio connections. Audio can be passed in or out of these connections between different rack devices in reason. So what about the smaller connections? Well, these are our CV and gate connections. They don't pass any audio at all. They pass control signals between devices, which can allow us to create dynamic audio effects using our collection of rack devices. So now, let's start actually using CV and gate. I'm going to create an instrument. For simplicity, let's just create a subtractor analog synthesizer. Hold the shift key, then right click a blank space within the rack devices insert effects area. Highlight instruments, then click subtractor analog synthesizer. Draw an audio cable by dragging the main audio output of the synthesizer to the left mono input of the mix channel. Right click on the body of the rack device and then click create track for subtractor 1. Press the tab key on your keyboard to go to the front panel of the rack device. I'm going to go with a CCRMA e-piano. Now, if you don't have a MIDI keyboard or other such control device, press the F4 button on your keyboard to bring up the on-screen piano keys. Now, you should hear the instrument play notes when you press the corresponding keys. Try holding down a key and listen to what it sounds like, sustained and continuous. Now hold down a few keys. That sounds a bit plain and boring, so let's make it a bit cooler. Press the F6 key to hide the sequencer and just focus on the rack window if necessary. Right click just under the subtractor, highlight utilities and click RPG8 monophonic arpeggiator. Right click the front panel and then click create track for ARP1. Now hold down several keys at a time and listen. The arpeggiator is now creating melodic patterns and playing them through the synthesizer we created before. If you press the tab key, you'll see why. Yes, using CV and gate cables, the arpeggiator is now controlling the synthesizer, and you're now controlling the arpeggiator. Go ahead and delete the track we created for the synthesizer by right-clicking on the Subtractor 1 label and clicking Delete Tracks. Don't click Delete Tracks and Devices, otherwise you'll undo everything we've just done. Go ahead and input some notes, so staying together for a while. Press Tab to flip back around to the front of the racks. Great! Now that we have a pattern, let's tweak it even more. I'm going to go ahead and create a distortion effect by right-clicking just under the arpeggiator, highlighting Creative Effects and then clicking Scream 4 Distortion. Then, press the space bar to play. You might want to set a loop region by dragging the L and R handles at the top of the timeline, then pressing L on your keyboard to loop the region. Just make sure to hide the on-screen piano keys with F4 if you haven't already. Adjust the distortion settings to taste, then press tab to flip around to the back panels. Here's where it gets interesting. While holding the shift key, right click just under the Scream 4 distortion unit, highlight utilities and then click matrix pattern sequencer. Go ahead and click and drag an imaginary cable from the matrix's curve CV output to the Scream 4's damage control CV input. Press tab to go back to the front panel and click the matrix's curve and key switch to the curve position. Now, using the mouse, draw in some random curve points on the rack device's display. That sounds okay, but let's do something even cooler. 
Again, whilst holding the shift key, right click under the matrix rack device and highlight utilities, then click Spider CV Merger and Splitter. Now, drag the Scream 4 end of our CV cable from the Scream 4's damage control to the top left split A input on the Spider unit. Then, draw a new cable from the connector to the immediate right of that input to the damage control input on the Scream 4. Then, another cable from the LiDAR INV output on the Spider to the P1 CV input on the Scream 4. This INV output inverts the polarity of the CV signal, creating an inverted CV signal output. Great! Now we have a dynamic distortion sound, as well as a dynamic melody on the synthesizer, with only five rack devices. This is a very simple, rudimentary setup, and there are a lot more options within Reason for using CV and Gate, but this should give you a basic understanding of the CV and Gate protocol within Propellerhead's Reason Digital Audio Workstation. Try experimenting with different devices and parameters, and see what you can come up with. I hope you enjoyed this quick Reason tutorial. I'm Anthony Deep, goodbye for now.